Hi, Sit and Be Fitters. Teresa Burry Van Marsen here. Hopefully you're all feeling well and enjoying this beautiful, beautiful day. Um, just as a little um, disclaimer, uh, if you're not feeling quite well, take it easy. Maybe even skip the workout. Um, if you're feeling at all that certain body part is uh, just not working for you today, modify and always, always bring in any recommendations that a physical therapist, another trainer, or an instructor, a surgeon, or doctor has recommended to modify for that particular issue, concern, or, um, or uh, maybe a hip replacement, knee replacement. Always, always listen to your physical therapist's and surgeon's recommendations. Um, and I will try to give as many modifications um, to keep this as fun, energetic, intense, but safe. So always listen to your body and feel free to modify. Let's go ahead and get started. Without further ado, um, starting out with a nice, tall, lengthened, lifted posture. So you want your feet hip width apart like train tracks. So unless I specify otherwise, try to keep your ankles in line with your knees or slightly behind in line with your hips. So at any point in time, try not to cross the legs, knock the knees, or bow out like you're riding a horse, and keeping this nice train track 90 degree alignment. Um, you're sitting high in your sits bones, so you're actually not sitting on your tush. You're sitting on the sits bones, keeping the pelvic bowl upright, as if this bowl had water and the water is not spilling out in the front due to overarching the lordotic arch, not spilling out the back as to be sitting on the gluteal muscles on your tush and pel being in pelvic tilt without a lordotic arch. So in other words, a very flat lower back. You don't want that. You want to encourage and support the natural S-curve neutral of the spine. And a natural lordotic arch in the lower back is ideal. Um, nice lifted rib cage off of your hips. The navel is pulling in and up, supporting the lower back. The shoulders are stretching in front, contracting in back. So the lifted torso away from the hips is open and stretched. Chest muscle stretching, front shoulder muscle stretching, the back and the back of the shoulders contracting. So the back of the shoulders are connecting down and in. The scapula, the muscles between the scapula bones, the rhomboids, are depressing and retracting the shoulder blades. So it's actually assisting or creating the movement of the shoulders being down and open. And then the nice long neck cervical spine. There should also be a little, a little dip a little less than the lordotic dip. So the cervical spine has a dip, but it's a gentle, um, nice lifted skull off of that cervical spine. The back of the head being pulled up and out. So as if you had a ponytail, is being pulled out away from the front of your body and up. Nice lengthened cervical spine. And the bottom of the chin is parallel to the floor. So in other words, the chin isn't jutting up or out, so the back tip of ear is way in front of this marble in the shoulder. You wanna make sure the chin is down and back, the back of the head is lifted, and you have nice support from the chest, front shoulders, upper neck and upper shoulders and upper back to support the weight of the head. The head weighs about 15 to 20 pounds. So if you were to take that 20 pound head, bring it forward, you can imagine how it can give you a neck ache, some tension headaches, or even other ergonomic problems in the shoulder, frozen shoulder, rotator cuff, lower back. So you, it is very important where you maintain the head and that these big, big muscles are supporting the weight of the head. So this is good strength training work right away. So we're starting out in our nice, perfect posture and ergonomic alignment, nice and lengthened. Inhale, arms up. So if your shoulders and neck are bothering you, you can just inhale, and exhale without lifting the arms up. I try to utilize the arm movement 
in order to allow the arms to come away from the body to increase the range of motion and the flexibility and mobility of the joints but it might not feel comfortable for you today. So modify, keeping your arms nice and close or even at the belly, inhale, or you can even modify by doing one arm at a time, inhale and exhale, or forward, halfway up and exhale. That is a nice increasing mobility and flexibility, but modifying, keeping that arm close to the side of the body, not higher than shoulder height. Two more breaths, inhale, so you've got lots of things to choose from, lots of exercises to choose from just by breathing in. And then again, inhale and exhale. So arms are relaxed down, roll the shoulder back right and left. Now this also might be a little too, um, a little too much for the shoulders or the neck, depending what, on what's going on. So you can just shoulder shrug, inhale, exhale, keeping the arms safely close to the body or inhale and exhale, both arms forward and back. And otherwise, if the shoulder roll is feeling comfortable, bring the elbow back, elbow back, elbow, and full back stroke. So leading with your thumb, that helps open up that shoulder joint. Lead with your thumb, maintaining that nice lifted torso, nice head and neck right above the upper chest, upper back, and we'll do a couple of couple more, couple of big reaches and relax. Now let's reverse. Let's start with the left arm. Left arm forward. Keep it small or up and down. You choose. And forward. And it's nice variety to mix it up. Even if you don't have a neck and shoulder issue, changing your movements and changing that alignment and posture is always or just you know, moving the arms in different directions is always a welcome change for the body. Lead with the elbows, keeping the spine tall, keeping the navel pulled in. Now full stroke, like you're doing a crawl stroke in swimming. Soon we'll be hitting the swimming pools and the lakes and the beaches. Maybe four more, three more, two more, and one. Relax the arms, inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, two more times. Deep breath using the arms or not. And one more time, inhale and exhale. Hands on the hips, right toe into the floor and circle around the ankle. Circle, circle, circle. So just to give you a little preview of what we've been, what we're, what we're up to for today, lots of props. So I have some paper plates. So if you don't have some paper plates close by, can't imagine that you would, but just in case, you can use this as a warm up and go get your paper plates. And then reverse direction. We are going to use Dynabands, tubes, a ball or a pillow, a hand towel, or the ball and pillow can double for the hand towel, and weights. And you can use cans of soup, or a jug, a jug of milk, other ankle, and circle around. You could actually get creative adding some resistance and not if you don't have any weights or you have light weights and you want to use a little more, you can put a, a couple of books in a sturdy plastic bags, maybe double them up, or a sturdy tote bag, reverse direction. And as long as you feel that, that they're equal in weight, you can even, you know, use a plastic bag or two totes and, and get your weightlifting exercises that way, as long as you feel comfortable with that. And then march it out, right and left, right and left, pumping the arms or hands on hips or hands on your thighs. You can even add a little resistance. And all of these exercises that we're doing seated can absolutely be modified standing. No problem. A seated class can be modified to standing, and a standing class can be modified to seated. I have a boot camp class that I teach that's quite lively, advanced, and high impact at times, and I have somebody in their late 80s taking it, and she modifies all the exercises to a seated class. So it's absolutely perfectly welcome we welcome everyone from zero to 102 and out and beyond. 
and march it out, march it out, and then toes forward. And again, you can come up standing and march it forward. And march with toes inward. And march with toes outward. Keeping it nice and safe and comfortable. And you can even jog if you'd like. Just if you're, modif or if you're in your basement or a very, very hard surface, I would probably suggest to keep it low impact. You don't want to be jumping or do high intensity pounding on concrete, even if it has a, a padding of uh, carpeting and then carpeting on top of it. It's still a lot of impact for the joints. And then toes forward, and then toes out wide, and toes forward. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, arms down. So we're going to start with just five sit-to-stands, just as a warm-up. Now, if you prefer to do it seated, just to be seated the whole time, that's fine. Your ankles are slightly beyond your knees, your chest is lifted, and you're just pressing your hands into the thighs. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. So you're pushing into the hands into the thighs, you're contracting the buttock muscles and you're pushing your heels down into the floor. So you're creating some nice resistance. But if you'd like to sit to stand, please join me. Your ankles are beyond your knees, chest and shoulder is back, hands on the thighs or hands on the chair and press up five and then inhale down. So hands on the thighs, come up to perfect posture, squeeze the glutes, pull the abs in, and three more, three, inhale, exhale, two, inhale, exhale, one, and down. It's amazing how quickly the body warms up with that beautifully low impact, full head to toe, to the tips of your fingers, to the tips of your toes, thorough muscular um, activation exercise. Take your left heel forward, roll your shoulders back, maintaining that head in line with shoulder and hip. Brace your core, pull the abdominal in, bring that braced core tor tor torso uh, forward. So flexing that foot, you're activating the tibialis anterior. Your tibialis anterior muscle, the outer shin muscle, is flexing, shortening, pulling the toes in towards the kneecap. The quadricep muscle, the front thigh, is flexing, shortening, bringing that kneecap into the quad. And while those muscles are contracting and shortening, the opposing muscles behind the leg are stretching. So you're stretching your calf, the back of the knee, and the hamstring. And inhale and exhale. It's nice to know what goes on in the body to create a certain type of uh, uh, stimuli or response. So we're stimulating the front part of the body while we get a nice stretch response in the back of the body. It's a contract release type of a stretch. Contracting, releasing. And then slowly ease up a little bit, point the toes and hinge forward. So now we're stretching a little bit more of the top of the foot and the shin by the positioning of our toe. Our calf muscle, the back lower leg muscle is contracting, shortening, and it's stretching the front muscle, tibialis anterior and top of the foot. And then inhale and exhale, but the quadriceps still contracting and the hamstring is still stretching. So we're getting a double stretch for our hamstring, which is kind of nice because the hamstrings are one of the tightest muscles in most people's bodies, but especially people that are active. So getting a little extra attention for that hamstring is a good idea. And then slowly come up, stack that right leg in front, ankle, knee, and hip, 90 degrees. Bring the left leg behind, ankle, knee, and hip. So you've got two 90 degree angle legs. That back heel is lifted way up. You're on the toe ball of that back foot. If your foot starts to cramp, just get out of the stretch, massage the muscles a little bit, shake out the foot, and try to reposition. Roll the shoulders back, abs tight seated sturdily on the chair, so feel like you're on a sturdy chair, but you are seated on it in a, in a sturdy, safe way. Never feel like you're too close to the edge, not feeling comfortable. And then inhale, 
Push that back hip forward. Nice long stretch for the quadricep hip flexor. Now we're contracting the hamstring, contracting the glute. So to stretch the front part, hip extensor, glute, hamstring contracting, hip flexor, quadricep lengthening. Now we're stretching the front part of the body. So contract, release. And then slowly ease back. Bring your legs together. Take a nice deep breath. Exhale. And again, the breath can be here. Inhale and exhale. Flex your palms. So you're just pushing your heels of the palms out, stretching the lower arm, contracting the top of the arm to stretch that inside part of the arm, the lower arm, the forearm muscles. Roll the shoulders back. So we're opening the chest, stretching here and here. We're contracting posterior delt and rhomboids. So contract, release. And then inhale, contract, release. Inhale, and exhale, one more. It's good to hold the stretch two to four breaths at least. Inhale, and exhale. Allow the head to come up to center, shake out the hands, and then flex your palms. If you have carpal tunnel or arthritis in the hands or fingers, sometimes just relaxing your arms at your side. Just contract it back, left ear to left shoulder. Contract, release, and try to keep the shoulders down not up towards the ears, but away from the ears. And then inhale, exhale, one more inhale, and exhale, and bring the head center. Roll both shoulders back a couple of times, shake out the hands. Let's go ahead and work on the hamstring and calf stretch on the other leg. So the left leg is out, tibialis anterior, top of the foot contracting. Kneecap to quad, quadricep contracting. So the gastroc, the soleus, and the hamstring, back of the upper thigh, are stretching. Contract, release. And then from a dowel in your hip, that perfect S curve neutral is coming down. Inhale. Try to do most of your breathing in through the nose. That helps properly warm, humidify, and filter the air um, for the lungs. And then again, inhale. Exhale. And it actually creates a nice relaxation response. Breathing deep breaths in through the nose triggers a, um, in the central nervous system, it kind of gives it a more of a relaxing uh, situation. If you breathe deeply and quickly through your mouth, it creates a little bit more of a stressful situation for the central nervous system. So nice, deep, long, slow breaths and stretch. Enjoy the stretch from inside and the outside, a nice relaxation stretch. And now reposition your body, come up, point the toes, feel the top of the foot, the shin, and the quad. So we're still stretching the hamstring, still pulling that kneecap into the quadricep, but now we're stretching, uh, contracting our gastroc, gastrocnemius calf, uh, lower back of the lower leg, the soleus, stretching tibialis anterior, top of the foot. Inhale, exhale, who knew you would be getting an anatomy lesson and exercises and stretches? Sounds good. We have to work our brain cells too. And then slowly come up, stack the legs. So now you're in a 90, you're in a 90. Modify if you need to, sturdy on the chair. Shoulders are back. Contract the calf, hamstring to stretch and release. Hip flexor, psoas, obliques, quadricep. Nice long stretch. And then inhale, arms up. Exhale, again, inhale, arms up, and exhale. Keep lifting the torso. The body wants to continue to pull to gravity, so these muscles get crunchy and munchy. Definitely a scientific term, crunchy, munchy. Not really. So you're lengthening and stretching, trying to resist gravity. Gravity wants us to come down to it. You have to resist and use these muscles to lengthen away from it. It's hard for everybody. And then inhale and exhale. And then slowly ease back, face front. Place the hands on the hips. Roll the shoulders back. Let's look over the right shoulder, keeping hips, knees, ankles, and shoulders forward. Look right, center, 
and left. In other words, try not to twist at the waistline when you're looking over your shoulder. Try not to twist your shoulders while you're looking over the shoulder. Keep everything still and brace so that we're really isolating the neck muscles. And take it side to side. We're keeping that range of motion in that shoulder and neck. Good. So when we're back to driving again, a little bit more than we are doing now probably, and out and about, we can easily keep that range of motion, looking over our shoulders. Good. Four more and three more. Push the envelope a little bit, look a little farther back, and then hold it center. Now tilt to the right and center, left and center. So also, in other words, stay looking straight ahead. I can't technically see you, but I want to see your smiling faces straight ahead, not looking down and down like this, just directly to the side. These muscles tend to get a little bit tighter and you lose a little, mo you can lose a little mobility there more quickly. And down and down. Now tilt the right ear to the right shoulder, hold it. Tuck the chin to the chest and roll it down and over to the left and down and over to the right and down, over to the left and down and over to the right. And then look straight ahead, take a nice deep breath. Exhale, inhale, and exhale two more times. Inhale, and exhale one more. Inhale, and exhale. Let's start out with our sit to stands. So I'm going to be um, motivating you to do four to five sets of 20. It sounds like a tall order, but it really get, goes by fast. And then you get a really good workout. So pace yourself. You can always do five, rest for five, do three, rest for three, and so forth. Listen to your body, but we're going to get started. Um, your hands are either on the chair, your thighs, or across your chest for a little more intensity. Inhale and exhale up. Inhale and exhale. Good. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. You can even use your arms halfway. And you can even go fuller. We're five into it already. And exhale. Keeping your hips, knees, and ankles like train tracks. Nice, open, proud chest. Woo! Inhale, exhale. Notice how my chin goes out a little bit and then it goes down. It's out a little and then down. So I'm maintaining that neutral head and neck and I'm adding a little extra lift. 10 more guys. Exhale, nine. Feel free to take a break if you need to. Eight, open the chest, seven. Inhale, abs tight, six. Keep squeezing the buttock muscles, five. Good, lengthening the arms, stretch them four. Inhale and exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale and exhale, one. Grab a towel, a pillow, or a ball. Place that right between your knees, ankles, knees, and hips. Palms are facing in, roll the shoulders back. Inhale, exhale, squeeze the ball and press the palms in. Inhale and exhale and you have all your posture cues. Perfect desk curve neutral. Good, so I'm not rounding in, I'm keeping the chest proud. Inhale and exhale, inhale and squeeze. So we're working our inner thighs, working our core, our chest, our arms. Inhale, creating some nice compression for hand and wrist. Three more and two, one more and squeeze and hold it, hold it, hold it and relax. Remove the ball or the pillow, place it down and grab your Dynaband. So you can grab a lighter Dynaband or a heavier one. If you only have one and you feel it's too gentle, just double it up. But for the first set, keep it um, at that single um, resistance so that you don't overdo it the first set. Roll the shoulders back, feet hip width apart. Inhale and exhale, stretch. Inhale and exhale, stretch. So you're bringing the Dynaband right to your chest. 
your elbows are coming back. To modify for shoulder and neck issues, just an underhand grip, elbows close, and exhale. Good. Inhale and exhale. Four more. Three more. Two more. And one more. Relax the Dynaband. Take it right down. Grab a chunk with the right hand. Turn the palm out and then curl up and down. And if you happen to have two Dynabands, even if they're of different resistances, you can go ahead and use both and then flip it. So right now my right hand has my lighter Dynaband, my left hand has my more intense Dynaband, but that's okay. By using an, uh, not a perfectly balanced uh, amount of resistance, right side to left side, I'm creating a core instability. So it actually fires up my core. So as long as I'm not compromising my body and trying to kind of tilt and work harder into my heavier Dynaband, my waistline is working. My core is working. Four more. Just remember to flip it the next time. Three and two. One more. Excellent. Place your Dynabands on your chair back. Second set of Sinta stands. Now again, modify with the heel raise and a press and a slight forward flexion, or here we go, hands on the chair, pressing up. Good, hands on the thighs, increasing resistance. A quite challenging one is across the shoulders. That's five, so let's keep going. Exhale, add the arms. My chin goes out a bit, my chin goes down. My head goes down and lengthened up. Keep it going, full range. And pull the belly button in. Squeeze the buttock muscles. 10 more guys, here we go. And it's 10. Inhale, make sure the knees aren't kissing. Nine, or bowing out. Keep the chest proud. Shoulders are down. The back of the shoulder blades contracting. You guys got it. Here we go, five more. Inhale, four, inhale, exhale, three, inhale, exhale, two, inhale, exhale, one, and down. Shake out the arms and legs. Second and final set of the inner thigh ball squeeze and pressing the palms together. This time, walk your ankles a little bit closer, keeping that perfect alignment. Inhale, press, inhale, Exhale, shh. inhale, exhale, shh. inhale, exhale, shh. inhale, and exhale. Five more, guys. You can do it. Looking good. Keep that spine tall. Keep the chest proud. Compress the arms as best you can. If you have carpal tunnel or hands, hand, wrist, um, uh, arthritis or tennis elbow, go easy on this. You may want to actually pull the arms apart like that. One more. Here we go. Create that tension. Relax. Shake it out. Remove the ball and grab your Dynaband. Now, double it up. Make it a little harder. But if you felt the first set was challenging enough, then don't. But you can actually make it harder by doubling it up or adding another resistance tool to it. You can double and then add another Dynaband. It creates more work, more resistance. So arms are forward and ahead, chest proud, and exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, and then perfect posture. Coming forward and ahead with a lift, then down and back. Shoulder blades, down and back. Chin, down and back. Let's do four more, here we go guys. Four, reach, lengthen, exhale, three, reach, lengthen, exhale, two, reach, lengthen, exhale, one, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and slowly release. Take that lighter Dynaband, place it around your left foot or on the floor so your left foot can step on it, and now the more uh, heavier resistance Dynaband, if you had two, under the right foot. So here we go with bicep curls. Grab a chunk, roll the shoulders back, 
Turn the palms out, curl the wrists under a little bit, and exhale up. Feeling the upper portion of the arm working, the bicep. The wrists are curled under slightly, so you're wor really working on bone loading and strengthening for the hand and wrist. And that's considered fall prevention. Because if you happen to take a tumble and you have to brace yourself using your hands, if you have strong muscles in the hand and wrist and forearm, it will absorb the shock. It'll be able to handle the impact of the stumble. So it's really important to keep those hands nice and strong, forearms nice and strong, and the ability to build bone. You're activating and stimulating those muscles and those muscles are pulling on the bone, which is hopefully creating a little bit denser bone. Everybody's body responds differently, but generally that's, that's what occurs. At any age, two more, and one, halfway up, shoulders back, little pulses, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, come all the way up, Lower down for eight, seven, six. We're working eccentric contractions. It's a nice strength building style of contraction. And relax, woo, shake it out. My bicep muscles feel as, like the noodles or these dynabands are so um, shaky and worked. Nice job. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Two more times in and exhale. One more inhale and exhale. So let's focus on the legs a little bit. We're going to work on the lower, the pelvic floor a bit. Um, the hip flexors, hip extensors, all the muscles through the hip, a little around the knee and the ankle, as well as core stabilizers. So grab a paper plate, one paper plate for right now. Place the paper plate um, right underneath the ball of your foot. Your heel is lifted slightly. Your arms are down by your side or hands on your hips or right across your thighs like so. Brace your core. Pull the navel in and up. Rib cage is closing down and in, getting tucked into the navel. The hips are closing in and up, getting tucked into the navel. So you're creating this nice, strong, rectangular front core. And then you're adding that motion from the hip, the knee, and the ankle. Put a little bit of pressure on that paper plate, and then you're just going to draw a small circle going out, away from the midline of your body. So you're bringing it to hip width, and then you're going away from the midline of your body. And if anything feels uncomfortable or painful, um, modify. Do a forward and back gliding motion. That may feel more comfortable, forward and back. But otherwise, getting into the deep hip rotators, circle that paper plate on top of the floor. Even if you have a carpet, you could pretty much get away with having some motion um, with the paper plate on the carpet. And it's a pretty inexpensive exercise tool. And reverse direction, take it in. Start small. Notice how your hip flexors, inner thigh, your adductor muscles, outer thigh, abductor muscles, and the back of the upper thigh, the upper hamstring and the hip extensor is really working all throughout that right joint just by gliding a paper plate around on the floor. And then hold it center, change legs. So you're getting a little bit of ankle and footwork as well because you're using that pressure. Switch over, so take a couple of breaths Exhale, because that was hard work. Inhale and exhale. Put a little pressure with the ball of that boat, toe ball of the uh, left foot now, lifting the ankle and starting in a outer circle away from the midline of the body. So here's the midline of the body. You're going out and then back to midline. Out and back to midline. Now, if you're feeling comfortable, it feels good, bigger range of motion. Go big or go home only if it feels good. And pressing down. Notice how the pressure around the ankle, you're working your ankle, working the whole integrity of the knee, front side, back side, front side, back side, as well as the hip. Front side, back side, front side, back side. Reverse direction, take it in 
and gather that inner thigh, that adductor, when it's coming in, imagine you have a ball or pillow and you're giving it a little extra squeeze. Giving it an extra squeeze. Let's do four more. Four and three and two and one. And then march it out right and left. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, one more. Inhale and exhale. Please grab your Dynabands. Now again, you're pretty warmed up, so double up your Dynabands if you have more than one. Step on the Dynaband with your right foot. Angle your body to the side. So perfect S curve neutral. Dowel in the imaginary dowel in the hip comes forward. Brace your core. Grab a chunk of the Dynaband and exhale. Elbows close. So your elbows are really close to the waistline. I'm holding on to my imaginary grapefruit. I'm keeping the front shoulders and chest stretched, proud, lifted, away from the navel. A lot of times gravity and the tension of the band pulls me and levitate that torso away from the pelvic bowl. Gravity always is pulling us down, down, down. We have to really work to resist gravity. Keep going. And then if you're doing it with resistance and working, and really getting strong, your muscles uh, will remember. The muscle memory, the contractions, we're developing a, a highly functioned, appropriate posture, fighting gravity almost naturally without even thinking about it by doing the work that we're doing right now. And two more, and one more, and hold. Notice I'm keeping my elbows really close to my body, and then go up an inch and down an inch. Up an inch and down an inch. So I'm opening my chest and breastbone. My shoulders are not being hoisted up. They're just going gliding back for a deeper scapular retraction, deeper core, deeper squeeze of that walnut between the shoulder blades. One more and exhale and then relax place the dynabands on your chair back march it out left leg left and right nice deep breath and exhale inhale we're due for another sit to stand shake it out modify modify this modification i'm going to give you is hands pressing down in your thighs your ankles closer uh, towards the chair underneath the chair shoulders back you're going to add an Angle, an ankle lift with pressure of the upper body. So, shh. so you are creating some nice contractions for the hamstring and calves. Otherwise, without further ado, pick your favorite position and here we go, 20 more. It's up. This is our third set of 20, not too bad. Two, exhale, three. Keep those train track legs. Four, make sure your sturdy chair is right where you left it when you got off of it. So make sure it's down there, take a peek. Good, exhale, and exhale. Keep driving into the heels. As you drive into the heels, feel the calves, the quadriceps, hamstrings, all the thigh muscles working. Squeeze the buttock muscles, engage the gluteals. Good, 10 more guys, it's 10. Go as slow or as fast up tempo as you feel safe and comfortable. So try not to go too fast. If it's getting a little boring, you wanna go, wanna go faster, go for it. Five more, keep pulling the abs in. Four, drive your hips forward, but squeeze the buttocks. Three, maintaining that neutral posture. And one, and then down, good. Shake out the arms and legs, march left and right. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, inhale, and exhale. Shake out arms and legs. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side, but we're gonna vary it just a little bit. We're going to go forward, back, side to side. So keeping that perfectly lifted core, hands on the hips or thighs, go forward and back, then back to neutral, and then to the outside and to the inside and center. So forward, back, neutral, then out to the side, and then in. Back to neutral, forward and back, and neutral, side and in, and neutral. 
forward and back to starting position, then side and in, back to starting position. Forward and back, and side to side. Forward, front thigh, shin, and back, calf hamstring, and then abductor, adductors. Forward and back, and side to side. Press down into that paper plate. Side to side. Working on the integrity and the strength, mobility and flexibility of the ankle, the knee, the hip, and all of those muscles around it. So many muscles are really being activated gently. Whoops. Forward and back, and side to side, and forward and back, and side to side. Go slow, go easy. Only use the range of motion that's comfortable, that feels safe. Good. It says low impact, but low impact doesn't mean low intensity. It can be really hard work. Woo! Two more. And out. Oh my word. One more. Woo! And out and in. Without further ado, let's get the other leg. So you're standing with that left, I'm sorry, the right heel lifted, right toe ball going forward and back, neutral. Out and in and neutral. Nice. Forward and back and neutral. Abductor, adductor, neutral. Quadriceps, shin, calf, hamstring. Ad, abductor, adductor, neutral. Good. All those muscles around the ankle, the knee, and the hip. Pelvic floor. These are really helpful walking muscles. Forward and back and neutral. Side and in and neutral. Forward and back. Press the floor as intensely as you can. Forward and back. Go easy, especially if you're known to have a little bit of a tricky ankle, knee, hip. If you've had stuff going on with your hamstring, listen to your body. Always go easy. You never know how you're going to feel tomorrow or the next day. So go easy. Out and in. One more. Forward, back, neutral, out and in and neutral. You can push the paper plate off to the side, grab your double dynabands, march it out. Your double dynabands or not, modify if you need to, step on it with your left foot, grab a chunk of the dynaband, shoulders back. That perfect S curve neutral is coming forward. Abs tight, inhale, exhale, pull. Inhale, exhale, pull. Woo. Exhale on exertion. I'm exerting maximum energy when the dynaband is stretching and I'm really working on that resistance. The resistance is getting greater as the dynaband is stretching more and more. So that's when you exhale. Exhale on exertion. Good. Keep that rhythmic breathing going. Never hold your breath. Holding of the breath can cause a, a pressure in the body, a valsalva maneuver, which could um, just create a, a deeper pressure in the body. And it's not ideal, so keep breathing. Even if you can't get it and you're exhaling when you should be inhaling or inhaling when you're exhaling, you're breathing. You're not holding your breath. So you can always work on exhaling on exertion. Good, four more, and exhale three, and exhale two, get ready guys, one, then you go up an inch, down an inch, up an inch, down an inch, up an inch, down an inch, up and down, four more, keep the elbows close to your body, chest proud, chin to chest, two more, one and hold, now lower it, eight, Seven. So this is an eccentric contraction done very slowly. So technically, you're exerting on the eccentric as well. So you can inhale or exhale, either or. Just keep breathing. Shake it out. And then take a nice deep breath. Inhale and exhale. And inhale. 
and exhale, sit to stand. Okay, so the modification for those of you who are opting out or who want to integrate some calmer exercise in that 20 sit to stand rep, you can go heel and toe. So you're pushing the heels down, the toes down. So toes up, heel up, and adding a little pressure of the hands and the upper body strength is going to get some chest work for you. Some chest, shoulder, tricep work, as well as core. But without further ado, here we go. Pick your arm position and you're coming up. And exhale. Good, keep reaching. Exhale. And keep going, squeezing the glutes, shoulder blades. Good, I'm gonna get fancy. Now you can keep pressing down with hands on the chair or one hand on chair, one hand on thigh, crossing arms across, but alternate. So now we're doing left and then right. And now both for two, both for two, and both for two. Now right, uh, left and right, here we go. Left and right, and both for two, here we go, up. It just changes it a little bit for you, give you some variety, and you can circle and circle. Now, if you feel this throws you off a little too much or feels a little bit unsafe, do not do it. Keep with your tried and true. Let's finish last eight and seven or six and five. Good. Or out four and three all these arm movements help activate the core one more Woo! and then down march it out right left inhale arms up and exhale inhale arms up and exhale and shake out arms and legs really really nice grab your ball or your pillow and place it right between the knees also grab your Dynaband or hand towel. Now you can use, if you don't have a hand, you can get a little tighter grip on that dish towel. Let's do two more. Inhale, exhale, squeeze. <laughs> I was gonna say swing. Inhale and exhale and squeeze and relax. Place the towel on your thighs, shake out your arms. Okay, put the ball right between, ball or pillow, right um, between your hands. So you're going to create a nice tension and resistance with a pillow works just fine or a ball. Um, your fingers, the pads of your fingers are dimpling the ball. The palms of your hands are going to be compressing. So it's as if you're trying to pop the ball and you're using the strength of your upper body. So give your legs a little shake, widen your stance a bit, sit right high on your sits bones, really high on your sits bones, shoulders back, inhale, and exhale, dimple and compress, and then relax. Inhale, squeeze, pads of fingers, and then heels of palm, compress. Go easy if you have a carpal tunnel or arthritis in your hands. Inhale, exhale, dimple, compress, and then inhale. Maintain that nice tall lifted form, dimple and compress, and inhale, dimple and compress and relax one more dimple and compress and relax good place your ball or pillow down right next to your hand towel shake out the arms and legs you might feel a little bit contracted and flexed so let's give you a nice lengthening and opening in the joints the wrists the elbows and the shoulders, but also keeping that uh, consistency of work in the chest and arm air, chest and, and arms. So your right hand is cupped towards you, left arm is cupped away. Roll your shoulders back, creating this energy circle. Inhale, pull your right arm that way, left arm that way, but your fingertips are cupped and you're pulling. So inhale and exhale, pull. Inhale. Exhale, pull, inhale, exhale, pull, inhale, and exhale, pull. Relax, shake out. Take your right hand, place it directly above your ear. The chin is to the chest. You've got your perfect posture, abs tight, sits bones. Inhale, push your head into the hand, the hand into the head, press. 
So inhale, it's like this, exhale, press, but it's an isometric contraction. Inhale, exhale, press, hand into head, head into hand. Inhale, and exhale, press, go easy, especially if you have any neck and shoulder issues. Inhale, and exhale, press, good. And then slowly relax, shake it out, and then take your right foot forward, left leg back, cup your left hand towards you. So you're cupping your hand like this. Your uh, right hand is cupped and away from you. Cup those pads of fingers like little hooks. Roll the shoulders back. Create this nice energy circle. Inhale, tall spine. Exhale, pull, opening up the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder. Inhale, exhale and pull, keeping the neutral spine. Inhale, lift up, lift up. Exhale, pull, keep the abdominals in. Inhale, and exhale and pull. One more for extra credit. Inhale and exhale and pull, 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 pull. And then slowly back. Good. Shake it out. Roll your wrists around. Left leg forward, right leg back. Roll your shoulders back a couple of times. Left hand above your ear. Perfect S curve neutral. Chin down, chin back. Inhale. Exhale, press. So without moving or changing your alignment, inhale, you're pressing your head into your hand and the hand into your head, but you're actually staying neutral. And then inhale, exhale, press for a nice isometric contraction for the muscles in the neck. Inhale, exhale, press. Nice compression for hand and wrist, fall prevention. One more, inhale, and exhale and press and relax shake out arms and legs last set fifth set of sit to stands now please modify modify if you're like oh my gosh i can't possibly do another one i don't think i should then don't definitely not i know we've got a lot of um, various levels and, and a multitude of age ranges checking in with the class so i want to have something for everyone but if you're feeling good, feeling strong, go ahead and do your sit to stand. Last 20, we're going to count down. Here we go. And it's 20. Inhale and exhale, 19. Inhale, chest proud, 18. Back of the shoulders contracting, 17. Long spine, 16. Belly button in and belly button up, 15. Inhale, exhale, 14. Switching it up a little bit. 13, inhale, exhale, 12, keep smiling, keep breathing, 11, change the arms if you'd like, 10, and 9, open up the chest nice and proud, 8, contraction, exhale, 7, inhale, exhale, 6, keep squeezing the glutes, the buttock muscles, 5, inhale, exhale, 4, Inhale, exhale, three, and two, and one, and have a seat. Shake it out. Give yourself a hand, a pat on the back. Nice work, guys. And you can do that anywhere. You're walking in a park when we're allowed. You can see a park bench. Each time you see a park bench, do sit to stands. Do five, do ten. It really ups the cardio. It's a beautiful thorough oxygenation for the heart, the lungs, and the rest of the body and muscles. So last exercise, guys. Class went by fast. Hopefully it went just as fast for you guys, too. So your hands are on your hips, your arms are at your side. You're going to take your braced core, you're going to lift your right foot up just about an inch, you're going to glide it into the midline of the body, and then out away from the body, back in, up, and down. Again, so you're lifting up an inch or two, bring that knee in towards the midline adductor, abductor, in, hip flexor, psoas, lower core, and down. So we lift the foot up, hip flexor, quad, adductors, abductors, gluteus medius, neutral, hip flexor, psoas, lower core, and down. Lift up, it's in, it's out, it's in and up and down. And yes, by all means, modify standing. You come up, you go in, you go out, you go in, 
up and down. Let's do one more. We lift. It's in. It's a lot easier standing because your body isn't already in flexion. When you're seated, it's super hard. Shake out the right and left leg, so always listen to your body. Modify and exhale. You might just try one or two, and then let's do the other side. So either seated and with perfect posture, we lift without rounding or moving the upper body. So stay lifted. Lift an inch or two, just an inch. It's in, it's out, in, up, and down. And again, we lift the left. It's in, out, in, up, and down. We lift up, keeping that posture tall. In, out, in, up, and down. It's lift, in, out, in, up, and down. Three more. In, out, in, up and down, two more, in, out, in, up and down, and lift, in, out, in, and up and down, one more, and in, out, in, and up and down, shake it out, inhale, arms up, Exhale, hands on the, on the hips, circulate that right ankle. And again, you can do this standing if it feels more comfortable, especially after that workout. It's a real thorough hip flexor workout. And then other foot. And it should never be painful. If it may feel hard and challenging, and you know, but never in your pain, it always should be pain-free range of motion. Never in a painful range of motion and circle. So last one, um, I may have said that, but you know me, I always like to give extra credit. So you're standing um, firmly on that left foot. You're going to lift your right leg up, point the toe, and then you're going to angle the right knee in and out, and in and out. Now the range of motion might be very, very small, especially while seated. So you can do it standing in and out, also a small range of motion. So the knee is coming in and out. Go slow. If it creates a pinching feeling or bothers you, eliminate the exercise, modify, modify. Two more and one more, neutral and down. Let's do the same thing on the other side. That left leg comes up, toes are pointed, knee goes in and out, in and out. So if you can imagine that ball and socket of that femur, the head of the femur in that socket, and it's gliding in, gliding out, gliding in and out, waking up all those tiny, tiny, tiny muscles. But just go easy. Just try one or two. If you have never done these before, modify, modify. You just don't know how your body's going to react tomorrow or the next day. Delayed muscle soreness can occur two days later. So just go easy. One more and center and down good take a breath exhale inhale and exhale hands are on the upper thigh you're just going to press your right foot into the floor like your right foot is pushing two pounds of pressure on a scale as if your feet are on a scale ease back a little bit now the left foot push two pounds of pressure with the left foot and ease back a little bit two pounds of pressure right foot and ease back Two pounds of pressure, left foot, ease back, one more, press right foot, and back, and left foot, and back. Shake out arms and legs. Let's stretch out those hardworking hip flexors. So come onto your side with the left foot, 90 degree angle, stable position, right leg, 90 degree angle, squeeze the buttock muscles, lift your torso off your pelvic bowl, and push the hip forward by contracting that glute. So right hip, right glute, squeeze. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, inhale, and exhale. Interlace your arms behind you, open up the chest. And if that's bothering your arms, you can just not interlace them, just keep your arms separated. And then relax and bring the back leg in, flex that side of the left leg. Hinge forward for a nice hamstring, back of the knee, and calf stretch. And then inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale. Come up, just change the legs for the hamstring. 
angling that right heel out, seated, seated comfortably uh, on the edge of your seat. Inhale, lead with that breastbone, chin is to the chest, long head and neck. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Ease back, 290 degree angle legs. You're squeezing that left glute, stretching the left hip flexor, so as roll the shoulders back, push the hip forward, make sure you're feeling sturdy on that chair, and then inhale, arms up, exhale, interlace your arms, roll the shoulders back, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, last one in, and exhale, ease the body forward, stack the legs, a little cat camel. So the hands are on your thighs, inhale, arch, and exhale, round. Inhale, arch, exhale, round. Two more, inhale, arch, exhale, round. One more, inhale and arch, exhale and round. And then sit square comfortably. Last four deep breaths. First inhale, arms up. Interlace, stretch to the right. And then up, relax down. Inhale, arms up. Interlace, stretch over to the left. Keep that right hip glute bolted. Up, relax. Inhale, arms up. Halfway down, interlace, round the back. Inhale, up. Exhale, round the back. Top. And then inhale, up. And relax the arms down. Give yourselves a hand. Give yourselves a big thumbs up and a good pat on the back. You guys did five sets of 20 sit to stands. Hopefully you got a good workout out of that and hopefully you modified if you felt it was a little too lively, a little too challenging. Um, we did a lot of thorough joint exercises and um, our joints are going to thank us because they'll be supported and strong and ready to carry us through our day. Take good care and looking forward to next Monday. Bye bye everybody. Teresa Burry Van Marsen signing off.